Thank you for joining me for another Mickey J White Hat. Today, when is an image file not an image file? Can an image file be something else? Well, yes, it can, and we're going to have a look today. Thank you to the ransomware I received in my email. Let's pull it apart. So I've received a zip file with a JavaScript file in that. The code inside that was ausfocated. That's going to decrypt itself, download a harmless JPEG file, but then rename it and use VBScript to execute it from the computer, bypassing all security. When I did this in my test lab, it bypassed UAC. Nothing popped up. Nothing warned me. No antivirus. No nothing got infected. My test lab went down hard. So let's have a look. First of all, We've got Pete Flynn JS, which is a file hidden in a zip file, which code looks like this obfuscated mess. I have no idea what this is doing. I can see a variable being declared. I can see something that kind of looks like words, but bleh, horrible. So let's make this make sense. So I've gone online to my favorite JavaScript beautifier. I've pasted in all that gibberish. And we go shift enter. And look what we get. We now have something that looks a lot more palatable, something we can work with. I'm fairly confident this is a virus. So we chuck it up through virus total to see what result we get. Virus total is not our friend today. Virus total is saying it's safe. I don't think it's safe, but it says it's safe. So we're going to get this script and we're going to pull it apart and have it have a look and see what it does. So I've pasted this into a text file and the first thing I note is there's a few semicolons missing. So I've got another online tool. I've gone up to find the missing semicolons and add them in. And I'll include that link into the description. We've now debugged the code and we've put back the missing semicolons. They're just a few, just enough to make it not want to run. So we've put all the semicolons back in and now we can have it further a look. I've gone into it now and I've given it a HTML header and I've also given it some ending HTML. And I've also gone through and done a little bit of debugging to work out what's going on. So the first thing we've got after all this variable declaration at the very beginning here, which looks horribly ossificated, We've got creating a dictionary. So here it goes, creates an empty dictionary. It adds some keys to the dictionary with a value of A is T. And then we go through and loop through those items. And at the end of that, we come out and we check the length. And then we've got a whole bunch of other stuff going on here. Rather than read it out to you, I'll probably stick some of this in the description. Or if you ask for it, I'll email it to you. Just pop your uh, details into a comment to contact me. Um, but as you can see, we're assigning various variables, making things add up, but we're basically slowly decrypting into something. And then down the bottom here, we're doing a document write. So as we just go through it line by line by line by line, we are now going to output to the screen what all this obfuscated code is doing. And there we have it. So all of that code and all it was really doing was creating this function going up to a website, doing a get, and it's pulling down from this .com domain, this image 51.jpg and 52.jpg. And you'll notice that when it arrives, it's turning it into an executable. So yes, it looks like an image file that's coming down, but it's not really an image file. So next step, on my test bench, I fired up Wireshark. I wanted to watch this all happen. So this is my capture from when I actually ran that script. The really cool thing about Wireshark, of course, I can go file, export objects, HTML, and in amongst this is listed 52.jpg, which we know is not really what it really is, and also in there will be 51.jpg. So from this packet capture, I can now export those things directly out. 
This episode brought to you by The Virus Doctor, so be sure to go and check it out at The Virus Doctor. The Virus Doctor, he's all about removing what I find. He removes all those little things that I pull apart. He shows you in four easy categories and some easy steps how to pull things apart. So go and check out The Virus Doctor. Without him, this episode wouldn't be possible. These are the items from the packet capture. As you can see, I've got five two there. So now that I've dumped them out, I'm going to pump that image file up through Virus Total. Ooh, this time Virus Total's not very happy. Look at this. It's a PEXE header. So he marked as bad, as detected. Ooh, it's not good. I happen to know this is a ransomware. And uh, yeah, it's not happy at all. Go into the details. Let's find out a little bit about this. Um... Okay, he's definitely got a PE header. Oh, he's got an icon there. Okay, yep. Let's have a look at the relations. Oop, he's got five contacted URLs. He's going off and doing something. All these IP addresses, look at this. Casablanca, wow. Okay, so it's getting out there. Name cheap, well, yeah, okay. So people obviously register domain names for viruses on the cheap. And community, what's the community got to say? Malware. Okay, well, I think that's pretty obvious. Yes, that's malware. So we've got these files down, had a look at it, but how does this appear in Wireshark? Having already gone through and changed various search filters, so looking by TCP, that kind of thing, I managed to come across the TCP stream, which contains the image. So... I happen to know that it was TCP stream equals 12. So I've put that in there. And this is now the bit in green here is all to do with pulling down that image file. Right click, follow, follow TCP stream. And this is where it gets interesting. I can now see the conversation. So here's the conversation from my PC, get image 52.jpg and negotiating the HTTP standard and pretending to be a browser. It's going to that domain that we talked about and it's going yep no worries from the remote end sent os or apache's going yeah you can have that file here it is now content type is a jpeg nice and safe and of course the first thing i expect to see in a jpeg header is j5 in this case i see mz i see the magic byte this indicates it's actually executable then i can see this program cannot be run in dos mode Ooh, okay it really is an executable and there's the pe for the pe header then I can see all the standard headers. I've got .text, .relocation. I've got all the resources. So this is actually an .exe file. And as you saw, I was able to pull that .exe file out before too. So we now know that this is a JPEG pretending to be an executable. And this code has managed to be able to run this on the machine without triggering UAC or the antivirus. So I've gone off and done a who is on the domain. I've found out who's the owner of the domain and I'll get in contact with them and let them know that one of their sub websites is sending off some viruses. It's in Moscow, so I don't know how I'm going to go with that. Also, looking back on my local machine at registry changes and I can see that underneath Windows run key, there is actually a gibberish variable running from my test machine in the roaming profile. Bang, there's the executable. So. What's the executable actually do? I'll give you one clue. Hmm. So this thing is Crypto Wall 3. However, Crypto Wall 3 in the wild hasn't been out for a while. So I suggest this is a new variant, a resurgence. Somebody's got this thing out there. But either way, it's a crypto locker and or it's a ransomware. Sorry, I should say. And it's going to ransomware this computer. I always find it amazing the links they go to. So this is how it all started. Some text that you really can't get anything out of. So I de it. I put some semicolons in where they were missing. And how it ended up was like this, which obviously is a lot easier to read. So it's looking for my temp variable. It's going to go up to the web. It's going to download some files. And of course, the payload bang right here at the bottom. So can a JPEG file be a virus? Well, obviously, yeah, it can be. Can a JPEG file contain a virus? Well, that's something we'll look at in another video. But 
I'll just give you a heads up. Yes, it can. Any type of document, doesn't matter what it is, if it's got any space in it at all and can be used for padding, then something can be put in that file. And as long as something else can execute it and knows where to look, anything can contain a virus. Some smart cookies done that on Android. So basically there are people running around with Android phones as they view images, they're getting hacked. So anything can contain a virus. In this case, did this JPEG contain a virus? No, it was the virus. All right, so helps that uh, help it, hope that makes sense to you all. Hope you can see the tools I use there. So you've got Wireshark for packet sniffing, the online beautifier, and a bit of common sense. And we've popped ourselves out a virus. Thanks for joining me. And until next time, if you've got a comment, please leave it in the comments. Obviously, I'd love you to subscribe. I'd love you to ring the bell. And even better, I'd like you to share this with your friends. Pop me on Twitter, pop a link through on Facebook, do it on LinkedIn. Whatever social thing you're into, pop it out there. I'd like to get out there so that people get educated and know how these things work and join me in the fight against malware.